Okay, so what I've done here is I've taken my three inch gauge. This, it's um, 50 mil travel, three inch face. This is the Cronus one that I just got. I'm loving it. Um, and what I've done is I've just trimmed in the top of the vise. Boy, you can't see it, it's just out of shot. What I've done is the pin's sitting on the um, support here. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at the gauge as it travels just along the top of the vise, because that's my, I'm using that as my reference in this case, because that's where I'll do my final sizing will be off the top of the vise. Um, and as it moves, well, we'll show you how far out it is. You'll notice, uh, we'll just move you into a different position so you can actually see the gauge. Look at how big it is in relation to my hand. So, when we change direction, we've got roughly two hundredths of a millimetre, or slightly less than a thou when we change direction. So we'll go this way. So we're, oh, I'm being pedantic here. Now this is the direction we're gonna be cutting in. And as you can see, the movement over half the, uh, oh, we'll zoom out a bit so you can see what's going on. I'll do it again. As we're coming back, we're on zero. As we change direction, we go to plus two, and we sit about plus two till we fall off the end of the vise. Uh, we're only tram going, we're tramming half the vise, because that's what works out as easy. As easy. I'm just playing with the camera. Uh, that works out as easy, but oh, gee, I do like this gauge. It is really nice to use. Um, we'll do some setup and I'll be back in a bit. Okay, what I'm doing here is I'm making some tea nuts and I'm going to make them fast. What I've done is I'm just squaring up a bit of 20 mil square bar. Um, not being too precious about it at the moment. done one face, I've already done this face here. So what we're doing is we're very carefully moving our hands what I've got here is I've got a roughing tool one end and I've got a finishing tool on the other. Now the feed rates on this are pretty high. Um, certainly not going to get accused of loitering, that's for sure.
is okay. Bring this forward. Okay, we're back. So I've got this face and this face done. So now what I'm doing, so that's face. Actually, I've got to put this in the right way around. I've got it around the wrong way. What I've got, no, when I say the wrong way, there's a, a folder chamfer on here. What that does is it stops the tool skipping. If you haven't got that chamfer, what you'll often see is a pressure mark here when I say here, further down, it, the tool will bite in and then it skips a bit and you'll end up with a chatter mark or a pressure mark, I call it a pressure mark, further down. And that's because you haven't got this leading chamfer. When it arrives on the chamfer, it's far kinder to the surface. Um, this is a pretty coarse finish because I've got pretty high feed rates on it, but uh, it's still adequate. And we're not taking off a hell of a lot of metal at the moment because I'm still just cleaning up to get to some square surfaces. So, we'll drop that in, like that. Actually, what we'll do is we will put it in with the machine face. Yeah, that's the end of the fold again. Just making sure I had it right. Put it in with the first face and the square face. This is just a bit of uh, 2.4mm TIG rod. edge we're going to go with.
This back one, in case you're wondering, is a stiffener. It helps support the uh, it helps support the front, reduces chatter. So what we'll do is we shall <laughs> chips that's come off it when it's cutting in that direction as you can see it's a nice chip uh, there's a little bit of yellow to it so a little bit of yellow no blue so that's a pretty good production chip for a shaper so now we're going to start chasing sizes I'll be back in a sec